Well, the Northern Plains could see a derecho this evening into the overnight, but what is it? And what do we know about it climatologically for our part of the world? Maybe you've seen one of these clouds before, a shelf cloud or a roll cloud. It's that outflow from a storm, uh, often a downdraft. And sometimes this is an indication of some very strong winds, uh, part of a squall line or a derecho. Derecho in Spanish means literally direct. It's those straight line winds. You need high dew points, uh, which we have in the Northern Plains, and a surface boundary. Uh, in this case today, a warm front. You want shear to organize any storm, but specifically directional shear versus uh, the shear we want for a tornado. We'll explain a little bit more about. And they're known for lasting several hours, uh, up to 12 plus hours, hundreds of miles, packing hurricane force winds. And they're pretty typical in the late summer for the north central U.S. Uh, and in fact, North America sees more of these than uh, most parts of the world. So what you're seeing when you see that shelf cloud is basically the cold front of that system. The cool, rain-cooled air moving outward at winds that can be up to 100 miles per hour. And that's forcing up the warm, humid air up and over it. So it works like a miniature cool front, essentially feeding that storm and organizing it. And that's why it has that shape. And that's the why, why it looks the way it does. Uh, that roll cloud here, seeing that low level moisture condensing pretty quickly right over that cold air. So on radar, it looks like this. This is the evolution of it getting that uh, bow shape. You hear bow echo a lot or a hook echo. Uh, this is what that looks like. And you have usually a little vortex on the north end of it literally like as you put your paddle through water you get that little spin sometimes that can produce some brief tornadoes too we call those gust nados and climatologically uh, the central u.s sees more of these than most places on the planet in fact uh, some places average one a year uh, in that middle of that bullseye and the difference between any severe storm uh, and a non-severe storm is how it can organize its outflow your average thunderstorm grows and then the rain cooled air ch chokes off the warm inflow but a severe storm can separate those two so winds are generally uniform aloft you get those spring garden variety storms they build then the rain kills it it lasts about an hour on average but a severe storm can last, last hours because it's able to separate that warm inflow air that it needs from the cool outflow air and the way it does that is with shear now specifically in a squall line or derecho we're looking at shear that is directional, basically winds moving in roughly the same direction, but with increasing speed with height that pushes that moisture out ahead of it, keeps that outflow air coming coming down and then pushing that warm inflow out ahead of it so it doesn't choke off the storm. In a derecho uh, or a downburst scenario, you want some dry air poking into the middle of the storm. It reaches that rain or hail and then that evaporates. It cools the air even more and it can push down some very strong winds aloft. So when we look at forecast soundings over eastern South Dakota later today, you've got that patch of dry air. The green uh, line here is the dew point. The red is the temperature. You got quite a gap there, dry air and also those winds moving again, roughly in similar directions, but at higher speeds as you go up. So that's why we have that moderate risk for severe storms today. Uh, and this is actually, they've updated it to expand it and move it a little further south and southeast. But in particular, we're looking at a severe wind threat. We've got plenty of moisture. Dew points will be in the 70s here, eastern South Dakota into Iowa. We've got a weak front that moved through yesterday and kind of meandering around. So south winds here, but then you can see north and northeast winds uh, just north of that boundary. So that boundary cuts across South Dakota southern minnesota so we have that in place and we also have those strong mid-level winds and a couple of upper level disturbances to get things going cool off the air aloft create that instability we have ongoing thunderstorms in north dakota today so we're going to be watching eastern south dakota western minnesota there somewhere to see those storms reignite later today and produce that potential derecho uh, but severe wind gusts looking likely regardless so we got that dry air this is 18,000 feet brown is that dry air moving in from the west punching into the back of the storm Lots of shear that'll be developing. And again, this will be mostly directional shear, whereas with a tornado, you want to moving in different directions uh, to generate that spin. This, we just needed to go uh, increasing height, increasing speed to just push that moisture out ahead of it. So these are winds at different heights, generally the same direction, except for at the surface. Uh, of course, near the surface uh, in the southern part of the state, we've got those south winds pushing in the warm, humid air. So this is a forecast model, and you can start to see that bow shape here as it develops later in the night into the early morning hours, probably moving into Iowa, Illinois even. So it's going to go through several states potentially tonight. Forecast wind gusts, don't pay attention to the exact spot, but it is producing those high wind gusts of 70, 80, even up to 90, 100 wind gusts 
somewhere in southern Minnesota, eastern South Dakota, Iowa, and then potentially even into southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois. So that's what a derecho is. It's a type of squall line and they can be pretty dangerous.